All right, this is it. The Vancouver Canucks are heading into the 2024 NHL playoffs, and at this moment in time, we don't know who they're going to play. This video is a pretty simple one. We're going to go over to a post made on the Arcanux subreddit by Sark1 that talks about how it's crunch time. Here is the Vancouver Canucks first round opponents matrix and how it heavily depends on how the Canucks do in the final three games. Right now, if you go over to the NHL standings, the Vancouver Canucks are indeed first place in the Pacific Division. But they have a four-point lead over the Edmonton Oilers, who have two games in hand. The Oilers, should they bounce back and win their next two games, it would put them at 105 points to tie Vancouver. However, this becomes a little bit complicated because the Canucks' next game is actually against Edmonton on Saturday. The Oilers, if you take a look at their schedule, they have themselves the Arizona Coyotes tomorrow before playing off against Vancouver. So if the Oilers beat Arizona tomorrow, they'll be at 103 points, 78 games played. And if they beat Vancouver in regulation on Saturday, they will catch up to the Canucks in points. But Vancouver actually does have the tiebreaker, which is regulation wins against Edmonton. So even if the Oilers beat the Coyotes and Vancouver, tying Vancouver, the Canucks still have that tiebreaker, so they would have first in the Pacific. But of course, in this hypothetical on Saturday, if the Oilers win twice, the Oilers would have three more games remaining. The Canucks would only have two. So it really would go down to the wire at that point. Vancouver, though, if they're able to beat Edmonton, this would be so clutch for the Vancouver Canucks. They beat Edmonton, and then they take that momentum against the Calgary Flames and the Winnipeg Jets. That could be the best case scenario to close out the season. And I say best case scenario, because if you take a look at the Vancouver Canucks opponents right now, they're currently facing off against the first wildcard team, which is the Nashville Predators. The Vegas Golden Knights are in the second wildcard spot with 92 points. The LA Kings, though, are above Vegas with 93 points. So not only is there a battle for the second wildcard, there's also a battle for the third Pacific spot, that in which is being shared between LA and Vegas right now. But if you go back over to this Reddit post made on the Arcanuck sub, here is the graph of what the Canucks will have based off of their overall odds. Take a look at the segment on the left. It says if the Canucks finish with 111 points, so they win three, they lose zero, and they overtime lose zero. If they finish with 110 points, they have two wins, 0 and 1. If they finish with 109 points, so they either go 1, 0 and 2, or 2, 1 and 0. 108 points, 107 points, 106, 105. The graph is all here. The percentages of the Vancouver Canucks winning the Stanley Cup change quite significantly, but it's averaged out at about 9.1%. Here are the chances on the Vancouver Canucks playing these teams in the first round depending on their record. This graph shows the Predators, the Kings, the Golden Knights, and the St. Louis Blues, who realistically don't have a chance, but we'll see what happens. If the Vancouver Canucks win three games in a row, they beat Edmonton, Calgary, and Winnipeg, they have a 74% chance of playing off against the Nashville Predators in the first round, a 7% chance of playing the Kings, and a 19% chance of playing the Golden Knights. This, of course, would all be dependent on the second wildcard spot. We can probably assume that the Dallas Stars are not going to lose that first overall spot in the Central anytime soon. They've got three games remaining and they're at 109 points right now too, so the odds of them losing three straight and Vancouver winning three straight, pretty slim. So if we assume the Canucks play off against the first wildcard, we're talking about the race between Nashville, Vegas, and LA for that first wildcard. It's pretty tight right now, but the Predators do have a lead. They've got three points on the... Golden Knights and two points on the Kings. If the Vancouver Canucks, though, only get themselves five points in this next stretch, they have a 76% chance of playing Nashville, an 11% chance of playing the Kings, and a 13% chance at the Golden Knights. So the numbers are a little bit different, but it's kind of stabilized all the same. If you go to 109 points, the Canucks have themselves a 69% chance of playing the Predators, a 17% chance of playing the Kings, and a 14% chance of the Golden Knights, but that is only in the 109 point scenario of the Canucks winning two games and losing one in regulation. If they go 1-0-2, they lose two in overtime instead, then the playoff odds shift quite tremendously because of the tiebreakers and because of the other games involved. 
LA would now be at a 31% chance. The Canucks chances of playing the Preds would drop down to 52% and the Golden Knights would increase to 17. Why is this, you might ask? Well, it's because if the Vancouver Canucks go 1-0-2 in their next few games, there are statistical probabilities that would exist that determine whether or not the Oilers would be able to take the first overall spot from the Canucks. There'd be about a 52% chance that the Canucks hold on to that first wildcard, and a 48% chance that they would lose that first spot in the Pacific. And I've been saying it the entire time, the Canucks need to hold on to this first overall spot in the Pacific and play the wild card because if the Canucks play the LA Kings in the first round, they're going to get destroyed. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I get it. You know, if you want to be a Stanley Cup championship team, you have to fear no team. You have to play whatever opponent. You have to be in the now. No questions asked. But... You can't help but think about it, right? Like, the Canucks have a winning record against the Nashville Predators this season. Against Vegas, they've started to win some games too. It's only LA that really gives Vancouver a difficult time, and it's unfortunate because if the Kings drop down to the second wild card, let's say they lose out to Vegas, Nashville has overtaken them too, if the Kings are in the second wild card, all of a sudden, they're tossed into that Central Division with Dallas, Colorado, and Winnipeg. Let the LA Kings play it out with some of those top teams and potentially get eliminated, and let the Canucks play off against somebody else in the first round. It's one thing to fear a team entirely, but it's another to be like, hey, my team has a better chance playing off against Nashville than they do against LA, or at least that's what I think a lot of Canucks fans would assume. And you can see on the chart as you go further down, if the Canucks finish with fewer and fewer points, the odds of them playing the Predators go down tremendously. If the Canucks lose out on all of their remaining games in regulation, they'd have a 72% chance of playing the LA Kings. They would essentially have themselves a 0% chance of holding on to the first overall spot in the Pacific, because if you assume averages for the Oilers, they'd probably go out there and overtake that first overall spot. So the Canucks would be in the second place Pacific spot. They already locked up home ice advantage, they're not going to go down to third, but if they're second, they have a 72% chance of playing the Kings and a 24% chance of playing the Golden Knights, depending on who is third in that Pacific. So if you share the same opinion that I do, that the Vancouver Canucks would probably have it in their best interest to play the Nashville Predators instead of the Kings, then the Canucks should probably aim for about three points in these remaining games, at least go 1-1-1, one, one, and, one, and preferably the one win the Canucks would have would hopefully be against the Edmonton Oilers. If the Canucks can go 2-1-0, then that significantly increases their chances of playing Nashville rather than LA. Or if you're of the mind that, hey, bring it on, get the toughest opponent out of the way first, get the LA Kings here in round one, then okay, hey, all the power to you to disagree. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Vancouver Canucks and which team you'd prefer them to play in round one of the playoffs the most. Do you want them to play off against an LA Kings team that has had their number? Like, seriously. These games against LA have been boring. The Canucks have barely won away with any results. They cannot seem to beat the 1-3-1 shutdown game. Nashville, on the other hand, the Canucks have had a good record against them. They played them a bunch earlier in the season and they won all those games, but the Predators are a bit better now than they were at the beginning of the season. So there is room for concern there. I don't want to make it seem like Nashville would be an easy win for Vancouver, but hey, all you need is Roman Yossi to go off. All you need is for Gustav Nyquist to continue doing his thing and for the rest of these Predators to continue building on the momentum they had when they had that super long point streak. As for Vegas, we just made a video about them because they re-signed Noah Hannafin. They have been struggling a little bit. So I feel like they're one of the more fragile teams in this playoff race comparative to the others. And the Canucks just came off of a pretty nice comeback victory over Vegas the other night. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Out of these three teams, Vegas, LA, or Nashville, who do you think the Canucks should play the most? And what are your thoughts on the entire graph showcasing whom the Canucks will likely play with depending on their upcoming results? Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And... Bye.